Friends, good morning. Welcome to our communion service here this morning at Church in the Park. It's great to see you. If you don't know me, my name is Ian Bentley. Uh, I'm the Associate Minister at the Morton Vale uh, Parishes in Cotswolds. I think this is now the fifth Sunday I've been preaching, but only the second Sunday I've actually been, uh, been out here. So it's great to see you. Uh, and especially if you're here for the first time, it's lovely to have you uh, with us this morning. Uh, the service will go through. Uh, We've got the uh, communion book and the other book. Uh, apologies, we seem to be probably running out this morning. So if we can share another uh, uh, novel, that'd be great. Thank you very much uh, indeed. One or two differences. This week, we are going to take a pledge. So during the offertory again, someone will be coming around with the bag for the collection. Uh, you guys on Zoom, don't think you get away with it. Going to send the boys around. It's lovely to have you sharing with us on, on, on Zoom. I hope you just read the wine ready. When it comes to communion, um, again, just come one at a time. We'll, we'll serve the uh, musicians first, if we may, uh, and then come one at a time, uh, uh, and we'll be, uh, be fine. Okay, including from outside. Probably easier if you guys outside come first after the musicians, then we know where, where, where we're at. Uh, if you not have to come forward, I'll happily bring the communion for you because that's, that's going to be easy rather than sort of um, doing the job out of your uh, seats. Let me pray for us uh, before we start. Father, we thank and praise you for the opportunity of coming together. We thank you for the reason we've come, which is to worship and glorify our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit this morning, you would lift our hearts as we sing your praises. You would open our hearts as we hear your word and build us as your people to the glory of Christ our Lord. Amen. I pray we still do need to keep the mass on, but we, stand, we can stand and we can sing how lovely on the mountains are the people. Let's stand. Thank you. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is looking for Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 4, verses 2 to 6. Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open the door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am changed. Pray that I may proclaim this clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you are toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer every word. This is the word of the Lord. And I see it to Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore. To send out workers into his field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. 
If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Friends, please do sit down. We're going to turn back to that reading from Colossians that Joseph read to us uh, a moment ago, and we're going to look at that now. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you that your word speaks to us down the centuries, speaks to us in our own situation. Help us to hear what you have to say to us today, Heavenly Father, wherever we're at on our journey of faith, that today you may speak to our hearts and change our lives. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, so we've been looking at Colossians, we finish it today, and it's a letter, and people don't write letters anymore. You know, we send emails, so you get an email ping through, and uh, you look who it's from and what it's about, and then you decide you're not going to open that one uh, <laughs> anyway. I wonder, if Colossians had been an email, what would have been the heading? What would have been the heading? I think it would have been continued. Continue because Paul was writing to these Christians to confirm, to strengthen them, to stabilize them in their faith so that they might continue in their faith all the way through to the end. Over the last four weeks, we've heard some encouragement to these Christians to live a life worthy of the Lord in chapter 1, verse 9, to continue in your faith, established and firm in chapter 1. Verse 23, to continue to live in him, rooted and built up, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And then last week, we were thinking from chapter 3, uh, verses 1 uh, and 2, to set your hearts and minds on the things above. My friends, what Paul was saying to these Christians, he would say to us uh, uh, as well, to carry on, to continue. But we know it's not easy. These Christians in Colossae, they, they, were, they were struggling a bit because they got some false teachers who come in and they said, well, it's all right to start your faith with Jesus, but oh, then you can add some other things in. You've got to add uh, obedience to the Old Testament law. You've got to add all these uh, ceremonies as well. And then they just knew the fact that it's not easy following Jesus because of the lure and the temptations of the world around us. And we're the same. We know that it's not easy following the Lord Jesus Christ, because yes, there are false teachers, but more because we know the temptations that we face day on, day out, and we struggle. It's not easy, but Paul was concerned for them to continue in their faith. And because it's not easy, we have this opening verse uh, of our reading today, verse two, if you've got a Bible there, I've got the passage open, look at it with me if you would. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Devote yourselves to prayer. Why? Because what they're doing is they're drawing God's power to enable them to continue. Um, and friends, don't believe the NRV. <laughs> don't believe the NRV. This is not further instructions, as it says in my Bible. This is essential. All right, this is not an add on, this is an essential. If we want to continue in the faith, we need to devote ourselves to prayer. And the first thing I want to point out this morning is Paul is saying to them to make prayer a priority. Devote yourself to prayer. I wonder, is there anything that you are devoted to? Family, work, church, sport. Jesus. Uh, and how does your devotion get shown? How do you show that you're devoted to something? I was reading the, uh, uh, online the other day of a chap named David Stafford. And he goes regularly from London up to Perth to watch his football team, St. Johnson. Well, he actually doesn't watch them because he's blind. So he goes with his guide dog 
on the train up to Scotland to watch, to hear somebody describe football to him. That is devotion, I think. What are we devoted to? Because if we're devoted to something, we perhaps understand the force of what Paul is saying here. He's talking about Christians, that if we're going to stand against temptation, we're going to be effective in our lives and our relationship in sharing the gospel. We can't do it ourselves, and we need God's help, and so we should be devoted to prayer. In this, Paul is not thinking about that little glass box. You know the little glass box, the little red glass box, which says, in emergency, break glass. <laughs> prayer is not the in emergency, break glass. Paul is saying prayer is something which is to be frequently in our use, more like your mobile phone, which is always with you and frequently being used. What he means by being devoted to prayer is not being that. So not some days praying and some days not. But taking steps to see that prayer was part of their regular life, like eating, drinking and breathing. Something they did naturally and always. In chapter 3, verse 17, Paul says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. How can we? How can we do that unless we do it by prayer? And then he gives them some specifics. Some specifics as to what they might uh, pray about. So the second point is pray for those who share the gospel. Look at verses 3 and 4 with me. It says, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. It says, pray for us. And I think there he's talking about himself and, and Timothy, uh, that they would be able to proclaim the gospel. These were guys who were on the front line, front line of gospel sharing. Yes, at this point, Paul says he was in chains, he was in prison. But he and Timothy had been called and gifted as evangelists. And he says, pray for us. We need your prayers. But what were they to pray? First of all, they were to pray that God would open doors, not the physical doors of his prison, but the spiritual doors of people's hearts and lives, so that they might share faithfully and effectively the good news. Pray for clarity. Pray that we would proclaim the mystery of Christ clearly. Not just getting the words right, not just knowing what to say, but getting the context, getting the understanding of the person. You remember Paul's uh, uh, sermon at the Areopagus in Athens, where he starts by talking about their, all their gods and all their uh, idols, and he gets into their context. And that's what Paul is asking them to pray here. But the request comes down to us. To pray for those who God has called to share the gospel. In that gospel reading we just we just had, it talks, it talks about them sent, being sent out. We need to be praying for those who have been called and gifted as evangelists and are sent out. I wonder if you know anyone who fix that and whether they're on, on your prayer list. Pray for us, Paul says. We're called, we're gifted, but we need your prayers. And then thirdly, we should be praying for ourselves and others. Verses 5 and 6. Again, look at it with me if you would. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to, how to answer everyone. He calls them to be praying for themselves so that they will be able to share their faith with others. Yes, there are evangelists. Yes, there are those who are sent out who are gifted by God, but it doesn't let us, others of us off the hook. And he's saying that we should actually be looking for those who are yet to come into the faith. So the way we relate to them and speak to them. But friends, you know, there may be here people here or people online who are yet to come to faith. Bear with me uh, in this, but we all know people 
who we long to see come to faith, family, friends, neighbours, acquaintances, just people we see, somebody serves us in a shop or in, in a cafe. And Paul encouraged them to be wise, be wise in the way you act. That is to be sensitive, to be courteous, to be kind, but also to make the most of every opportunity. That is to recognise when the opportunity is there to share something of our faith. Now, when we do that, those of us who are Christians, I wonder if when we have the opportunity, we do take it to share our faith. I think most of us will say, I've missed opportunities. I'm sure most of us will say that. I, I remember very, very clearly one, one day I was, I was on a train and an Australian guy sat next to me. He was just talking to me. And then he asked me the question, but I hate being glass. What line of business are you in? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, sometimes I say, oh, I'm a clerk. I don't add in holy orders uh, <laughs> after it. But I, I just said, look, oh, I'm a clergy. And he said, oh, that's interesting. Now, I wonder what you might have said. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I just let go. Uh, and regretted it. I still regret it today, sort of, uh, probably 10, 15 years later. <laughs> We, we do. We, we miss the opportunities. But Paul here is encouraging us to look for those opportunities and to make the most of them. And again, we need to be devoted to prayer to do that. We need to be devoted to prayer. So he says to them, be wholesome. And also, he says right at the end of that passage, let your conversation be full of grace. That's wholesome conversation. Season with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Simple, isn't it? Of course, it's not. Several times in the past, I've run a course called Lost for Words, which, is, which does what it says on the tip. It, it helps us to, to think about how I can share my faith with other people, difficult as it is. We know that we may be wise, we may act nicely towards people, but we don't always know what to say. We don't always know how to answer the questions that people bring to us. We're often lost words. Now friends, I'm trying to make this simple for a moment. In sharing our faith, we have two stories. <coughs> the first is God's story, what God has done for us, right? Uh, and in a sense, we just need a little simple way of remembering what God has done for us. God created us, right? But we rejected him. But God still loves us and sent the Lord Jesus Christ to us. Now, we can reject that. And if so, God allows us to do that. But if we accept what God has done for us, then God receives us, forgives us, and he receives us as his children. Simple as it. God, man, God. What if you do, what if you don't? I'll give you the other award, what if you don't, what if you do. But God man, God, what if you do what you do? That's God's story. And that's the gospel. And that's simple. Anybody can remember that. That's one of the stories. Uh, and friends, that's you know part of what we're meant to be uh, to be doing. There are other ways of, of remembering, but I, I do remember very clearly I was uh, doing a, a communion service at Long People's Home um, one day with my curate. And we'd done this service. Uh, and I was going around, and I was talking to people, I was saying, how are you, and you know, what's happening, and uh, things. And I looked across, uh, and my curate was kneeling beside a lady, and he got a scrappy bit of paper, and he was drawing out a gospel. And the gospel he was using was, the thing he was using was something called uh, Two Ways to Live. We just sort of see if you can see it, you can see it on the screen. Uh, and it's got little drawings in it to help us to remember the gospel and to simply share the gospel. If you want to have a look at that afterwards, please do, do ask me. It's just another way of remind, reminding ourselves of what the gospel is. That's God's story. But there is another story, and that's my story. And I know about you, but I love hearing what's happening in people's lives. And, and so do most people. I like to hear what's, what's going on, you know, how the children are getting on, how the grandchildren are getting on, uh, and so on and so forth. The other story is my story of faith. And when I'm encouraging people to tell their story of faith, 
ask them to say what you were like, what God did, and how it's changed you. And just think about that in your own life. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, how's that for you? See, I came to faith when I was 21. I had a pattern of going to church occasionally, saw Christians, and I couldn't be like them. I couldn't be good like them. They're all very nice people. No, I wasn't. Uh, and then one Sunday, uh, I was meeting with a group of young uh, Christians, uh, and the guy was speaking, and he explained about the cross. And he said that at the cross, Jesus died so that I might be forgiven. And it wasn't about being good enough for God. It was the fact that God made me good enough through the death of Jesus. Right? So taking off my shoulders. There and then, October the 8th, 1972, I came to faith in Jesus Christ. I'm not perfect. I promise. But God has changed me and is, is graciously using me to teach his word. Now, in my script, that was 118 words. <laughs> That's my story. You can tell me your story in, in 20 seconds, 30 seconds, or I can take 15 minutes over it. <coughs> Two stories. God's story and our story. And that's sharing your faith. Taking the opportunity. But to do this, we need to be careful. We need to be devoted to prayer. And we need to pray for people. We need to pray that, that we would have that opportunity. We, and there are people. Some way back, I, I heard the, the, the expression we should bring people to God before we bring God to people. We should be praying for people that we know and would love to come to faith. And pray for opportunities that God would help us to find those opportunities, to see those opportunities. And to take them when they come. To take them when they come. And thirdly, pray for clarity. That we know what to say. We don't, we don't know all the answers. Somebody may ask you a different question. They say, well, where is God, you know, when there's all this suffering in the world? <coughs> there's no harm in saying, pray for question. Let me get back to you on that. Because sometimes people use the questions like that to deflect what, what you've been said. Pray that you have clarity, knowing people's background, people speaking into people's situation. Paul was encouraging these Christians to continue. And we encourage our friends to continue, to continue in our faith, to continue to live for Jesus Christ in our homes, in our church community, but also to continue to live for Jesus Christ so that others come to faith. But to do that, we need to be devoted in prayer. So friends, if you take nothing away from this morning, take this last phrase away. Be devoted in the prayer. Father, thank you. I, I just want to thank you personally for your grace towards me. That you changed my heart and my life. Thank you that you can change the heart and lives of other people. But Heavenly Father, we, we do need to trust you. We need to rely on all of us. We thank you that whatever it is, whether it's sharing faith or whether it's uh, our health or the needs of the world, we can come to you and bring them to you, our great and mighty God. And so, Father, we ask that you would increase and help us to be people who are devoted to prayer so that in our own lives and the lives of others around us in our world, we may see you at work. To your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. <coughs> stand and our praise in God. <coughs> <coughs> okay, stop the page five. We say it together. We, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts with faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with the power of our mouth. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
We shift across the center of the center. Let us pray for the church and for the world. And let us thank God for his goodness. This morning we are focusing on mission here and around the world. During these prayers, there will be opportunities to pray for people we have encountered in our Christian walk and who have helped us to grow in faith. I invite you to focus on them in the times of silence. Father, we thank you this morning that we are here in church at all. Someone first helped us to understand what the Christian faith is all about. Someone first helped us to know your love. Someone first took the risk of sharing their own faith by what they did or said. We thank you for that person or those people for whom we first made contact with a living faith. We thank you for them now in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we know that the church will die in this generation unless people go on doing what was done for us, sharing their faith in action or explanation. Let us pray for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth on the 70th anniversary of her accession to the throne, giving thanks for her Christian witness and example throughout her long reign. We pray for those who have a special gift for making the gospel relevant and attractive. We pray for those who have a special way of living that draws others to Christ. We pray for those who have a special opportunity for mission, and we particularly think of Jill Kinsey in Lesotho, our brothers and sisters in Rwanda, and all those worldwide bringing the good news to those who haven't heard. We pray for the work of the many, many Christian organizations and mission agencies worldwide, amongst them Alpha, CMS, the Bible Society, Samaritan's Curse, the Church Army, and many, many more. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Church of Ireland. We pray for our church family, all saints, and we pray for all those who lead our worship, giving thanks for Ian and Ruth's time here with us. There are so many dedicated people sharing their faith, and we give thanks for each and every one. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for the communities in which we live, remembering the local community here in Almondsill. We pray for all who work and live at Aspen. We also ask your blessing on all those who give of their time or are helped by refood and the food bank and other support given by Aspen. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we give thanks for answers to our prayers for those in sickness and need. We pray for all those on our prayer list and others known to us at this time suffering in body, mind and spirit. We pray for those mourning the loss of a loved one. We name anyone in our thoughts now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. And this morning we pray for the people of Madagascar as they come to terms with all the problems caused by the severe storm. We pray for those who have been injured, those who have lost their lives, their homes or family members. Lord, give them courage, hope and peace in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We know it is our responsibility to take up the great commission to bring the gospel to others. And Father, we acknowledge our own diffidence in sharing our faith, the fear of embarrassment or seeming manipulative, of, of losing the trust of friends, Give us instead hearts full of love and lives centred on Jesus Christ, so that our words and actions are always Christian. So may we find ourselves naturally talking of Christian things, or talking of other things Christianly, in the way we respond to stories in the news, in the way we handle issues in the workplace, in the way we defend the weak, in the way we care for the wounded, in the way we care for our world even in the way we answer the question, what did you do on Sunday? Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Yeah. Father, we pray as we go out in the world this week that we shall not be ashamed of being Christians, that we shall not disown you or your standards, that we shall not ignore the honest question. We pray this week we shall be glad to know you as Lord, that we shall relax in the sheer normality of belonging to you, that we shall speak of you and act for you with courtesy and integrity. So as we take your light out into the world, let us remember in the words of that song that many of us learned as children, that Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light, like a little candle burning in the night. Merciful Father, I say these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, let's stand. So back to our service booklets on the bottom of page five uh, there. We are the body of Christ. In the wind spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's just offer each other a sign of peace as we are hoping in whatever. <laughs> Please be with everyone. Please be with, with you. Oh, now what's happened? Here is bread. Here is white. Please do sit down and uh, you've got your three footprints there. Please do turn to the bottom of page six. 
we pick up our service there when it says the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. Is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your word. In love, you gave, Je uh, gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where the angels sing your praise. We join them in heaven's song. Holy, holy. Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. It this is, is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed him, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. In the Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with open eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be yours forever and ever. Amen. As I say to the daughters, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, friends, <laughs> draw near with us. <coughs> He received the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, his blood, which he shed. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. 
Be friends at home. Take and eat, take and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see so many people here and to have Janet, our church lord, and father, because I can be redundant today. We had um, we actually had a very busy week. Um, ten of us attended Polly's funeral in Albuquerque. Fourteen people were here for candle mass service. Nine people went to Padern for coffee. <laughs> Ten people um, had communion and Bible study in Tavira. But to top it all, Jane and Graham had 48 <laughs> yesterday at their house for coffee and muffins. <laughs> and our friend Guy uh, raised 115 euros for SOS, which is sterilize our street animals. And I always have room for more. <laughs> yes, always. For more street animals. <laughs> this week, uh, Holy Communion here at 10 30. On Wednesday. On Wednesday and on Friday, Tavira at 10 30. And of course, Jane's on Saturday from 10 30. Holy Communion and live stream next Sunday. And I've got a congratulations to say Jose, son Daniel, and his wife. Have had a girl. Oh. Thank you, our dancing maker Ian <laughs> and Terry, and our technical team Colin and Sarah, and of course our musicians. Thank you all. Marina has something to say. <laughs> well, Marina's coming up. Can you learn to take this home with you? Because it's got two reminders on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm actually standing here by way of thank you. Um, you all gave me during the course of December and summer in January your little bottles with your little brown coins in. And I'm delighted to say that the total was 247 euros. Ooh. It is amazing what you can collect without knowing it. And that actually buys more or less four sand filters. So that is four families that will drink clean and safe water. And I'm sure many of you know um, there are lots of water aids throughout the world, but we support Samaritan's Purse. And whilst the numbers are getting better because of your help, there's still over 800,000 people per year that die as a direct result of drinking water, which are let alone all the people that get sick and nearly die. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And what I want to do, I have some water bottles with me, which I have paired with the label. I want to invite you all to have a clean drink of water with my very best wishes. And when you've drunk it, I'd like to ask you please to use the bottle to collect the little brown coins so we can buy a few more water filters. And please don't be despondent. It does take a while to fill this bottle. You can take a year. You can take however long, and just when it's filled, let me have it, and then I send money direct to the charity. And I know there are some people who have friends who are not churchgoers who also thanks. Can I ask you, you know who you are, please will you thank me very much uh, from us for what they do. Thank you. Marina, thank you very much indeed uh, for that. Just a couple of other things. Yes. Wednesday was candle mass, so a number of us were here and took candles away. If you didn't take a candle, you want to have a candle, we have less them. Uh, you can take them and use them in the house uh, over the yard. I'll, I'll happily give you a candle at the end of the, uh, the service. Uh, also, we, we are in a delightful uh, bungalow up in the, in the hills with lots of orange trees around us, and we bought some oranges and some lemons. If you want to take oranges and lemons from us at the end of the service, uh, Ruth will have them, uh, so please uh, do take them away. With you, we can't get rid of <laughs> Now, for our final hymn, let's raise the roof and set an example as we proclaim Go forth and tell, O Judge of God, awake. <laughs> Oh, 
Please do sit down. Again, thank you for joining us this morning, whether you're here or whether you're on Zoom. Thank you again to our musicians. Thank you, Colin, for looking after that super, uh, sorting out all the table things out for us uh, as well. Let me pray for us as we close. Heavenly Father, we hear those uh, words of Paul, where he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. We thank you, Heavenly Father. And as uh, Jenny's prayed in our prayers, we pray that we would not be ashamed to belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, that we would be looking for those opportunities and we would be speaking with that clarity which you can give us about our faith and our love for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so may the God of grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you, remain with you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.